1993, Needful Things. I think it's a Stephen King based on. <clears throat> the problem with these Stephen King adaptations is always the same thing. His books are excellent, brilliant. They can be a little bit dated. For example, the movie It, um, the TV version of it, the movie version of it, the repeat movie version of it in two parts. They all omitted the ending that was in the book because I don't know how they could try and justify the jailbait girl and it being gangbanged by all the other boys. Um, although the main reason it didn't have that scene in it is because one of the guys is black. But anyhow, the biggest problem with Stephen King movies is that it doesn't matter if it's the Langoliers, the Tommy Knockers, Needful Things, it, 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 or any of the other versions, um, movies and books that have been done, they're all shit. Income, on their own, they are a good movie. They're a good watch. They come across as being a low-budget, made-for-TV movie. That's how they come across. And cheap. Extremely cheap. This, <coughs> excuse me. This movie is 1993. So we're talking 21 years ago. No, my math has gone wrong. Sorry, nearly 30 years ago. Yeah, my brain's not working. I'm just a dodgy chicken. Um, yeah, we're talking nearly 30 years ago. I had a budget of 15 million, which back then is nothing. I mean, now you're talking billions to make a movie, but back then, and we're not talking unknown cast, we're talking Ed Harris, who was fresh from his fame for doing uh, Robocop 1 and 2. Didn't do a lot else afterwards. He did like mediocre kind of sci-fi movies afterwards. The woman, the, the dodgy blonde wig, I know her voice. I don't know what the hell she is. I know her voice. Uh, the one in the middle, she's famous for playing the wife of people. I don't know if it's just the homely nature of her face or whatever, but she always plays the wife every time. Um, the most famous one I can think of, actually she did one where it's like a big sci-fi movie in the late 90s. She played the president's wife. She's also famous for playing the wife of John McClane Die Hard franchise. She played... The wife, uh, estranged wife, 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 estranged wife, ex-wife of John McClane. So she's always playing the wife. But um, it feels cheap. I'm only five minutes in. But even though it feels cheap, it is still more watchable than most modern movies. I watched Enola Holmes Part 2 yesterday. And it is the same old woke crap. It's okay. But it is just so anti-straight white men. I mean, the first time you see Sherlock Holmes, it, he's drunk. He's, he's an alcoholic because he can't solve a case. Moriarty is a black woman. Watson is a black man. And Holmes is going to come out as being gay. Is probably, that's probably going to be the next step. Um, I just watched the latest episode of Young Sheldon. And I, it's a brilliant programme. I love the programme. It is not that woke. Except... The one time you get a close-up of Missy Cooper, who at this stage is 15, and, you know, the tits are getting fucking big. But the opening credits, they're still from the last series, so they're like B-cup. In this series, they're more like a D-cup. Anyhow, the one time you get a close-up of her face with her tit in the middle of the shot is when she sat next to a big, fat black guy. And that's the only time you get a close-up of her is when there's a black man in shot next to her tits. So, uh, yeah, it is kind of vile in that way but then it's American programs and they're always trying to groom little white girls especially like things like Chucky for god's sake the girl in that I don't care how big her tits are she's a child the most recent series she's still a child and yet in the first series she was 11 or 12 years old at the time and they had her sexually active a slut and a junkie anyhow back to needful things which I got distracted by um, they're okay movies, the Stephen King adaptations. There's a couple about um, cat people, which was okay. They're all okay movies, but they were made by people 
who are trying to follow a book and not actually following it properly. They're trying to be too artistic in their following of the book rather than trying to make a good movie. Which is a shame because the source material is excellent. I mean, things like the Tommy Knockers, that is an awesome book. I haven't read it in years, but it's a brilliant book. The way that they use uh, the, the brains to power the spaceships and they've been dormant for thousands of years. It's. You need to try and find a movie now, don't you? Bollocks. Anyway, I'll keep going. It is just beginning. The new store is opening in town. Bum, bum, bum. And the guy who owns the store, the villain of the piece, Max von Sydow. And at this point in the game, 20, up uh, 31 years ago, 31 years ago or 29 years ago? My brain is all functioning. 29 years ago. The only thing he was famous for internationally was a film that came out 13 years previously called Flash Gordon. And he played Ming the Marcellus. In European countries, he's more famous for being a bit of a nonce because he's done a lot of movies in the 60s, 70s, where he's basically shagging children. But uh, this one, he's still a creepy vibe, but he's only really done two movies at this point that were actually noteworthy. One was, well, internationally, one was Flash Gordon and the other, I'm not sure if he'd done it at this point or if it was within a year or two, um, Judge Dredd. And he's pretty good in that. It is nicely atmospheric. The little whispering in the background. But on a TV when it came out, which would have been 1993, your average home telly would be about 22 inches. That's how big your average TV was. Most people had portable TVs, which would be about 14 to 16 inches in diameter. Um, the bigger TV screens, like 40 inch, didn't come out until around the year 2000. But even with a movie this old, you still get a little whispering in the background. As he's basically bartering people's souls for little things that they need. It is a slow burn, but it's a good slow burn. If you want Crash Bang and Wallet, wham bam, thank you man, then don't bother. If you want a good movie that's a slow burn and gradually builds you up and you actually get interested in the characters in the movie, it's a good movie. And it's, um, I'm 37 minutes in and I'm not bored. It's annoying because I want to go and do some food and put the kettle on, but I don't want to pause it because it's good. I don't want to miss something. It's the little bits in the background. I say little bits, not little tits. They are not little. Um, like when he's wrapping up one of the items he's selling or exchanging for favours to people. Because he doesn't really take money. He takes favours. Um, he's wrapping up a piece of newspaper from 100 years ago. 400 people died in a dam sabotage. It's those little hints and things in the background. And he always seems to have exactly what the person desires the most. So you've got a, a Baptist minister who wants a picture of Jobby. You want a Catholic priest who wants a, a chalice, which could be from um, the Holy Grail. It would actually be the opposite way around. It's a Catholic priest who are more interested in kids. But anyhow, uh, it's these little items that people really want that are the things that they need the most in their minds. Like um, a baseball card from 20 years before the kid was born signed to him. Or um, a jacket that the, the town drunk wore for that one hour after the big game 30 years before when he was a hero for one hour in his life. The rest of the time he's a town drunk. It, it's these little things that people would desire. It's the background details that make it a good movie. Nice boobs. But um, this woman is quite funny. She has a presence, but she is so lardonic. Yes, it's a real word. I know. I said it. I made it up there. Um, Lacks a day school, another one. She just, it's like she's 
on weed. She's constantly, yeah, okay. Well, look, we can do this if you really want to do this. And it's the way she behaves constantly, as if she's completely wasted. But um, yeah, it's it's a good movie. It's a two hour long movie. Whether I'm still going to be interested in an hour and a half, that's a different matter. But yeah, so far so good. Two of my favourite actors. Don't ask me their names. I have not got a clue. Um, the, I recognise the names if I already hear them. But the guy on the right, I only really ever noticed him on a conscious level in Stargate. And he was in Stargate for about nine years, uh, eight, or, eight or nine years. Played Hammond of Texas. But after the event, I noticed he kept popping up in other TV series, other programmes. I just never registered it was him because he is quite a good actor. He's in this movie. He's in quite a few other Stephen King movies. He's been in, um, you know, a very prominent role, I didn't notice at the time, in Twin Peaks. And he was also in the, um, the Black Widow's bike group, bike gang, in the uh, blah, 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 Clint Eastwood movies. From the 1970s, Every Which Way We Lose, and those movies. And the guy on the left, he is an amazing actor. He has been around, I think he died recently, within, within the past year or two. And he's popped up in a lot of things. You might not recognise the face, but you will recognise the voice. And he looked pretty old then, and this is 30 years ago. And he was still popping up doing movies as recently as, say, five years ago. Um, for me, I first noticed a guy in a TV series called Max Headroom, which starred Matt Fuhrer. And he played Blank Reg. I still remember the, the character's name. It's that prominent. But he played several different characters in the Star Trek movies. Um, he played a Klingon. He played a Vulcan. I think he played a human as well. But he's got such a distinctive voice. He's popped up in Babylon 5. Very, very prominent career. So, um, shame both these guys are dead. Because their, their acting ability is really quite good. And understated. And right now their characters are arguing over the corpses of these two women. You see that the guy who trades these things. He doesn't want money. doesn't ask for their soul. Initially all he wants is a favour. Go and throw mud at this woman's laundry. Throw apples through this, woman's, uh, through this woman's window. And then it escalates. The more desperate they get to keep the thing that he gave, the more greater things they're willing to do, such as skinning the woman's dog. So she thinks someone else did it. Throwing apples through the woman's uh, windows. So she thinks somebody else did it. Playing them all off against each other. And you've got these two guys, one's a Baptist, one's a Catholic, and they're both raising their voices, trying to give last rites to the two corpses, to the two women who, who just killed each other. Uh, they're getting louder and louder and more aggressive. And more insistent in their angst. And it is just... It's the whole thing about religions. If you really do believe that your God is a good God, focus on what you have in common with other religions, not what you have that is not in common. Holy crap! This scene, the kid sat on the rocks with the sunrise and he's throwing stones into the sea. That scene was actually used for about 20 years for a production company as their logo. I can't remember what the bloody company is called, but that was actually used as their logo. Didn't know they swiped it from a Stephen King movie. This scene sums up Stephen King's work. You got all this serious stuff. People have been manipulated and their souls destroyed. I think he's took a bit of humour. I mean, the, the, these two guys have been fighting it out for years before the guy, the baddie turned up. So they finally got separated. 
One's been handcuffed to the car and the other deputy stands back. Right, now we're alone. And he's had his hand smashed up by a, a rat trap that was trapped in a bag. And he thinks this guy did it. Takes out his gun, points it at him. Now I'm going to get you for what you've done to me. Because we're alone and there's no witnesses. And like the gun goes down and lower and lower and lower. It points towards the guy who's groin. And the other guy's freaking out. And he pulls the trigger and it's empty. And he goes... Gotcha. And then the other guy kicks him in the balls, smacks him off the car, and goes, nah, 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 nah. It's that bit of humour that turns it from a two-dimensional film into a three-dimensional <laughs> film. <laughs> yeah, I like this movie. I'm an hour and a half in. It's, it is a slow burn. It's a... Slow, it's a drawn out movie but it's still good it's still watchable you also it's not 100% predictable it's like you don't expect the sheriff's girlfriend who he's just proposed to to shag the bad guy and she did shag him so it's it's nice that it's not completely predictable the heroes don't always live the villains don't always die Brilliant movie. The good guys don't always win. The bad guys don't always lose. And people actually have more than two dimensions. They're like onions. Yeah, good movie. Taking it up to the wire. The movie is two hours and 46 seconds long. At one hour, 56 minutes, you get a lovely twist. You think the bad guy's been blown up. He's a wizard or something, a soul stealer maybe, or trickster or something. He just brushes himself off, walks out of the exploded building. Bearing in mind, he's already fucked the sheriff's wife. Not raped, fucked. It was... She wasn't easy. Anyhow, he looks at them. Don't worry, sheriff, you're going to be married. You will have a wonderful, happy family. <laughs> And don't worry, I'll see. I'll say hello to your grandson. Bob will be his name. I'll see him in Jakarta in 2053 at 10am. We will make headlines. It's one of those movies that screams for a sequel but had never got one. Which is one of the good things, many good things, about Stephen King books. He leaves them open-ended for a sequel. That never ejaculates was he the father will he be the daddy don't know don't care good movie 